guys welcome back to another tutorial video and this is another colour pencil tutorial and this time we're going to be focusing just on drawing the skin so in the first part of this video you're going to see a clip from a recent Patreon tutorial series that I did on how to draw skin and how to pick all of the colours for your skin tone no matter what reference image you're using so I'm going to take you through that and if you want to see the full six skin tones that I do that for then that is over on my Patreon and then we're going to be going through two different different skin studies as well. I'm going to go through all of my like techniques, so my blending, burnishing, layering, all of that sort of stuff so that you can draw realistic skin no matter what skin tone and no matter what your reference image is. So anyway guys, let's get into it. So firstly, let's go in with Prismacolors and what you want to identify first is, is her skin tone cool toned or is it warm toned? Cool toned skin tones have more like blues or pinks or just cooler colours whereas the warmer skin tones have more like yellows and oranges. With her skin tone you can see over here it's quite warm, it's quite orangey and over here there's a bit of pink so they might have variations like they might have slight tendencies for cooler skin tones in certain areas and it might be slightly warmer, slightly warmer in other areas. Let's have a look first at this sort of section here. I would say this section is a very similar colour and then you've got this tone and also little variations of the shadows down the side. So let's go along with the Prismacolor set. And what you need to remember is I've pressed hard on all of these pencils. So this is the darkest possible outcome for each pencil. But what you need to remember is you can get lighter variations. So even if you have a colour that matches pretty much exactly but it's too dark, like for example, for this skin tone, light peach and probably like the light peach and the beige look like they'd make great combinations if you mix them together, but they're too dark. But what you need to think about is you could use the light peach a bit lighter, not press really hard on it, and maybe a bit of the beige layer, light layers of them, and then blend that out with the white. And that will give you a nice tone like this, but a lighter version. So you need to look for colour hues that look accurate with the reference. They might be a bit dark, and that means you might have to mix them with a bit of white. So yeah, for example, I would use the light peach here, because if I go across, it's the one that best, best matches with the skin tone and it is a bit dark so that's why I'd add a bit of white as well to balance that out and for example for this area if it's more highlighted I would use a bit of the light peach but add more white in those highlighted areas than light peach so for example with these darker areas I'd use a heavier application of light peach with a bit of the white but for the really bright areas I'd just layer a really tiny bit of light peach but mainly blend it out with the white. So that's what I'd use for that area. If we go over to this warmer toned area, basically every different colour hue I will then do a different swatch for. So if we go across, obviously it's not going to be the cream or any of the yellows, it's more orangey toned. So I just whiz through them until I find something that I'm happy with. So peach looks okay. Peach looks okay, it might need a bit of brown. The thing is you might not find one perfect colour match, but you might find something that you can see a bit of resemblance in. So for example, the lighter areas of this shadow, I can see a bit of peach in that, but it needs a bit more brown as well. So I might use peach, keep going down. The chestnut's a bit too reddy, it's more brown than red. So switch over to the other side. It's not gonna be any of those colours. And so this colour looks great, Burnt Sienna, that looks like that could be a nice match. If you mix that with the peach, you could get that nice shadowed colour. Also chocolate could be an option. And so there's not one right way of doing this. There's not one perfect colour. Mainly it's about getting the darkness values right. Is your values dark enough? And are they the right sort of hue? Are they the right tone? Are they warm? Are they cool? Do they match up with the reference image? So for that area, I might go in with a mixture of the peach and the 
burnt sienna. So anyway, I hope that has given you guys some sort of idea of how you can go about picking colours for your skin tones, no matter what the reference is. But if you want to see more sort of examples, then I have got six other skin tones that I go through this with with the colour charts and two skin tone studies that I show you how to draw in real time. So I'll leave a link in the description and a card up above and at the end so you can check out my Patreon as well as lots of other tutorials. But let's get straight on to the actual skin studies. So the first one that I'm doing is of the skin tone in the reference that I did like a minute ago with those six references it was the one with freckles and so what I always start off by doing with skin tones is identifying the darkest shadows and start to get them in I always like to get in the darkest colors first some people like to work from light to dark some people like to work from light from dark to light and that's how I like to do it. I like to start by getting in the structure with the darkest shadows and then I can judge all of the other values so because the left side of her cheek was more red toned, I decided to opt for the burnt sienna's but like I said, you've learned how to pick colours, now I just want to go on about the actual process of laying down the pencil. So the main things that are really, really important is to build it up in layers. You can see I'm using lots of different colours, I'm overlapping them. There isn't one perfect colour, you do have to overlap lots and lots and layer lots of different colours to get a realistic looking skin tone in order to make it look like it has depth and not just flat with one colour. Just try and look at all of the subtle little hues in that skin tone. Whether it's red toned, it might have bits of orange like this skin tone does with the freckles because the freckles are more orange toned. There's more multiple different shades there. When it comes to the actual layering process, I'm just going in with the pencils very, very sharp. That is a key factor and a key important thing to know is to use really sharp pencils as much as you can at all times because what this is going to mean is the sharper your pencil, the smoother you can get that shading because basically if your pencils are really sharp, you can get into all of the actual crevices of the paper and the white grain and so you don't have just really messy shading and pencil strokes. So when you actually go to burnish it out, which means basically blend it, apply a lot of pressure to the pencil to get that smooth look, you won't have pe messy pencil strokes at the start, so you're going to get smooth shading at the end. So what I'm just doing is I'm building up multiple colours, I'm just building them up and building them up and I like to blend as I go. So I might add a slightly darker skin tone as I'm doing now with the Burnt Sienna but I'll go over with a slightly lighter version to blend over that and to smooth out all of the messy pencil strokes. And a key tip that I have for you guys, and this is probably the most important thing to tell you if you want to get smooth skin tones, and that is when you apply your initial layers of pencil, actually go in the opposite direction when you blend that out with the pencil. So if you apply all of your initial pencil strokes vertically, you do the kind of up and down motion, then when you blend that out, do it horizontally because this will help soften out those messy pencil strokes and it does get you such a smooth result. Now with freckles, when you're building them up, it's basically random shapes, it's not like lots of perfect circles and if you go for like perfect circles or the same shapes, same sizes, same sort of depth, it's just going to look fake. So all I did for the freckles is looked at the reference image and got a rough idea of where the freckles kind of clustered the most, where they were kind of... The, the most on the skin and where the freckles were more intense and darker and I just tried to get variety in there and blend it in some places more into the rest of the skin and have some of them more prominent and it is about variety. But with skin tones, it might not always be super smooth. In the one I'll show you in a minute, it's not super smooth. But those are the main things that I can tell you. It's just really observe that reference. If you want to do realistic drawing, by the way, you need a reference image to see all of the detail. And try to get one that is high resolution so you can really focus on all of that texture in the skin if there is any. Most of the time, if you're drawing like a male person's skin or an older person's skin, then it might have more texture in it than, for example, a baby's skin would or a young female's skin so you need to think about the subject that you're actually drawing if you're drawing a really young baby you don't want them to have wrinkly creases in their skin you want to keep everything soft and soft transitions what I just did there was I created some facial hair using my crafting knife there's so many videos on me actually doing that so you can watch them for more detail on that but I just used that to create some facial hair and some flyaway hairs over the skin so like I said it's so important to pay attention to that detail but now I want to talk you through more of the process now that I've gone through some basic techniques let's go through the process with this second skin tone 
So again, as I said, I'm going in with the darkest shadows first. You can see straight away, I know where the nose is, I know where that crease is, I know where the structure of all this skin is because I've got in those darkest sort of values first and I can just build on top of that with more and more mid-tones and lighter colours. So at the moment, I'm just building up these shadows. I am leaving completely clear the most highlighted areas like you can see on that nose. I keep clear any bits that are gonna to be too highlighted because I'm just trying to block out the shadows here. So once I've got in those shadows with that brown tone, I'm just going in with some lighter colors. And you can see that, that kind of shadow tones that I've done looks very messy. When I apply the initial layers, it looks so messy, but then it does go quite smooth as I apply the lighter layers, you'll see I'll apply lighter colors and it will become more smooth because I'm blending in the opposite direction than I applied the initial colors in. For this skin tone, I am actually using the Prismacolor pencils because I know a lot of you guys actually use these rather than the Caran d'Ache luminance and I don't really like them that much. I think they're okay for beginners but I don't like them so much for skin tones. I don't like the fact that it's harder to build up the layers, you get more of that waxy sort of look. And I wasn't used to them really, but it was slightly different than the Caran d'Ache Illuminance, but I use the exact same technique. So if you guys do have Prismacolors and you watch my tutorials and you think, oh, I can't do them because I don't have the Caran d'Ache, that's not true. You can get similar results. It, it just, I just prefer the Caran d'Ache really. So you can either do it where you go across the whole of the skin tone and build up layers over the whole sort of area and build it all up together or you can work on rendering a certain area at a time and just move on from that. It's completely up to you. It depends which way you prefer. So on the creases, what I did was I applied some of the browner tones. I kind of like just drew in where the creases were and then I just pressed down harder with my lighter colors to actually pull out some of those highlights and to get sort of a three dimensional look so the creases add more texture. But another thing that you'll see me do in a minute is use my crafting knife to actually create texture. You can see I'm doing it now. You can use that knife to create little bits of texture in the skin, you know, any little bits of stubble and also highlights in the creases to get that scratchy sort of look and it is a great way to add texture so it's not only great for hair and facial hair but it's great for just pulling up highlights or getting in any texture that you need so those are my tips for creating realistic skin if you are interested in drawing super realistic portraits and learning all of the different features then i have brought out a brand new course that goes into detail on how to create super realistic portraits from start to finish all of my main techniques for that in a really clear and concise way all in one place so at the top of the description i'll leave a link to my course that you can check that out and watch the course trailer so anyway guys, that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here for future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.